Police, uh, um, trying to recognize the contributions to science to the Is there a way that they can take into account blog posts and comments, these sorts of contributions, and evaluate them in, in terms of evaluating the scientists or evaluating the work of research? Which is not the case today, yeah? No, I mean, it's Exactly. This is a very interesting question. I mean, this is a problem we are suffering from at the moment. And um, I think we are, as, as you said, or as you hope too, that we are, just, we are in the middle of and not at the beginning of making these tools available for science. So we have the chance now to influence decisions that will be made during this process. So that in, we influence who will be the stakeholders, who will be the people that set the rules for Science 2.0 in the future so that we can have uh, not only a monolithic system of impact factors but maybe a very complex system that can be discussed and some new concepts can be, can be picked and some others can be dropped if they are not valuable for assuring the quality of science and in the end funding of science. And we are in the beginning of this process and we should not let this process be driven by only commercial interests of very few, but by the interest for all scientists and for the whole public in the end. Okay. Yeah. So if you were planning to have a whole different system of uh, impact factors, what do you think is the most um, problematic or crucial point that can block this development right now in the present. What is the biggest factor that, that stops it or slows it down right now? Sure. To change this impact factor system. <laughs> it, it is the current is the status quo because the, the you get the money. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's economics. It's economics, yeah. Okay. Because you get the funding if you have yeah. good publications in well-reviewed journals. And then if you don't have the publications in journals, you don't get money. Yeah. So. Yeah. Another question? Okay. I work as a German research foundation as a press officer, and when I started the job, I thought a lot about funding and how it can be decided which research is good and or worth giving the money to. And publications are the only measurable thing that exists. So, after all, there has to be some system which is can, or which makes it visualizable how the community um, thinks about this or that project. And so, yeah, it's all about some measures for, for scientific process. Within the uh, scientific community, is it possible to think of some kind of a like button? Or people can raid within the uh, scientific community, well, this is a discussion that really uh, drives the process. And so you've got like um, value of the crowd that yeah. sets up. Well, this is really bring us. Forward. Yeah, so we have we have a like button, okay. um, <laughs> and we have uh, we have that. And um, we we calculating right now, and we call it RG impact factor. <laughs> uh, we're trying to think about something where we're putting um, views of this specific discussion. Uh, which is not any, it's not any qualitative, it's not like good or bad, but just how many views has a specific discussion, uh, how many times was, for example, a paper downloaded, how many times it was cited within the community, how many likes does it have, how many dislikes does it have, um, and we're trying to come up with something transparent, we're still thinking about something, how to make it smart, but getting all these different factors into one big factor, and then saying, okay, that's that's what we're calculating, that's the traditional way, and let's see how we can get them together. No, yes, but I think this, um, this rating is, is a very uh, important, important, way, an important tool or direction how you can start you know, evaluating the data within the community. Can I go to the rest of the uh, maybe quickly, uh, I just wanted to pass over the question to the scientists that we have. We have a senior scientist sitting here. Um, isn't it, Sönke, that every minute that you spend uh, blogging, uh, tweeting, whatever, isn't that a minute wasted, a minute lost for writing a scientific paper, for doing a proper, let's say, proper publication, which you will be evaluated uh, against by your uh, professor, by your uh, executives? Yeah? 
Sir? Yeah, of course, in the, the moment it is, but I think and I believe in the future of this method, so I intentionally block some of my results and share some of my results early that I will later share in a publication, but I will see how it works and make, it, and make an example here. Mm. So uh, these are not results that other people will steal and if this happens, I hope this happens in the future at some point maybe, I can, I can make a, may show an example of, or I can make a statement here and show that the, the people have stolen it because I've, I've published it with a name tag and a date tag on for example Twitter or ResearchGate. So if I have some ideas, I share them on Twitter for example and I'm assured that my name is at least combined with it. And I could confront the scientists in the future, you know, that this was my idea in the past. Like, for example, like you do in patents and early patent applications, you can just file them in a very preliminary form and later write a very uh, finalized patent application on it. So I'm doing, starting to do this with uh, some research results. So we will see where it ends. It's more feature than a bug. For you. Exactly, exactly. And and on the other hand, I got some comments on some postings that I just posted, and so I could build on them and learn from it. And of course, I will I will cite the work of the people later in the publication. For example, some blog posts or some comments that I posted on ResearchGate, and they had some they shared some of their ideas with them. I actually found some people that did some work from uh, that I didn't know about beforehand that could solve some problems by just sharing one of my early thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was a good on a, on a, on a research gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Science, yeah. yeah. It sounds as if it was a big experiment for you as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's so it's so all my colleagues say, don't share this, don't share this, don't share this. We should not share this, you know. We just keep it for ourselves. And in the end, they don't have money, don't have time, they don't follow it, so the thing is lost, you know, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous, you know. We spent some effort in it, we did some outline of some experiments, and it's basically just gone, you know, which is a waste of effort. Yeah. Okay. There should be some way of publishing it. Yeah. And to travel one step further, I mean, you have uh, mostly science journalists here, science communicators in this room. I mean, until now, you were expecting mostly that you communicate to your scientists, to your peers out there. What would you say if suddenly those, all those people were following um, your blog postings and uh, your citations and all of that? Is, was that the intention? Were you willing to open up as much as uh, we're discussing it here? Yeah. But yeah, there are several points to it. So one one thing I thought about the discussion that and all earlier is that it's the same problem with doctor social networks and patients that are in the mm -hmm. end asking. Mm -hmm. For example, me uh, me as a cancer scientist ask some people about this dedicated treatment of their cancer that they are suffering from, and I'm not a specialist in this very particular treatment, but it's stopping it reduced, you know, so the people realize that this is for scientists. But the same thing happens to you on Facebook. For example, if they learn that you are a cancer scientist, some guy from China asks you about this, this is a kind of tumor. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so this is one thing, and okay, the gatekeeping function of libraries is lost mm -hmm. here in the online world. You know, mm -hmm. beforehand there were universities and nobody had access to early scientific results, and this is lost. But this is regardless whether we do, we uh, have open access publications, for example, plus everybody can read and some patient might draw wrong conclusions from a reading of a new cancer study. And this should be prevented, but this is a problem with the overall internet. So we get more and more educated public, and of course we have to have some gatekeeping for them. Or, but, it, but I mean, this is a phenomenon that's everywhere in the whole society, I guess. You know? I think we have a question from a gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> And um, did you use other functions to connect with other social, uh, social networks or social bookmark functions like Dick and Mr. Wong? Yes, yes. Okay. we have them as well. Um, Facebook, Twitter, friend feed, almost, almost every social networking site you can share it to. Um, but what we see is that people you don't want to share that on these sites because they're again very general. Um, sometimes people share it on Twitter or on Facebook. But uh, the data which we have, we see that people usually hopes that they get the solution on ResearchGate and don't want to share that to you know your friends and run you know if you look at my friends on Facebook maybe 10% are scientists and the other not scientists and then you have one post which 
ninety percent of your friends are annoyed, maybe with the, what you know. So. Ah, other way around. So you, yeah, yeah, of course, yes, you can, yeah. Yes. 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 Yes, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that on, on research as well. Yeah, sorry. Did you say that the uh, journalist, the uh, journalist, can also find issues in the team, not issues, subject issues, um, topics. on topics, yeah, on and networks like yours, is that a yeah. source? And how would you do I, it? I, I think so. <laughs> I just got sometimes from journalists like, thank you, hey, thank you for this. Um, we got a new topic now. Ah, okay. I, you of course, the people can sign up and can connect to the people. Um, until they're not doing something spammy or something which is not okay, so they're getting reported, I think that's still fine. Um, we don't build something very specific, which helps right now journalists to make it very, to have it very easy to find topics. Um, but yeah, right now we're just focusing on the interaction between scientists and scientists, and that's all the products built. Okay, uh, just a second, because uh, what, what I was typing in, I typed in AHEC about two weeks, I think, ago, and uh, how many um, search results do you think I got for AHEC? Not many. None? Two, I would say. Yeah, no, no, it was... Uh, okay, so when, when I would, it was, it was none. Uh, what does that say? Yeah. Um, AHEC, if you see, AHEC is not a, was not a really basic science problem, right? It was a... It was a problem that a specific bacteria was spread somewhere, um, and they tried to find um, the source of it. It's it's a it's a different layer of, of where you know where ResearchGate is, and what the problem AHEC in the way showed us that lots of people communicating parallel to each other, um, and that they they sent I think mails, even not emails, they sent mails saying, hey, we found this and this specific uh, serotype now. Um, so I think that's a, it's a different layer um, in this because you're communicating, you're not communicating only scientists with each other. It's more, yeah, what, what you can see is, for example, influenza. When influenza, were, you know, the, the swine flu, there was immediately a group in ResearchGate and, and people start discussing uh, their research with that. In, by a, in, in case of AHEC, it was on the one hand very national, and on the other hand, it was a different layer, in my opinion, than a, you know a real scientific problem. It was more, uh, yeah, a Sherlock Holmes game to find uh, to find the, the source of it. Yeah, maybe uh, quick, quickly to Lou. Yeah, would would we have would we have found uh, the topic at Nature Network? Yeah, so not necessarily on Nature Network, but possibly on blogs.nature.com. So um, that's another one of the sites that we run that recognises that um, there's actually lots of different conversations taking place online. So one of the things about this online environment now that um, can be quite challenging is that there's an awful lot of content out there. There's a lot of people who produce things very, very easily. And um, it, it's back to this gatekeeping function, back to, to answering the question of how do you filter through all of the, the, the data, the comments, the blog posts, the tweets to find good quality information about what it is that you're interested with. So one of the ways that um, we try to answer this question is an aggregation site. So we list over 1,200 different science blogs and then um, search through those for popular topics that people are blogging about or particular scientific papers that bloggers are writing around. And I think that, that this is you know, quite an important challenge and one that's facing um, editors and, and news journalists in general. That the, the unit of dissemination of information online is getting smaller. So it's not so much that we necessarily listen to albums anymore. Um, you know, as the comments people were saying, um, you know, we listen to songs. It's not necessarily that we buy a whole newspaper anymore. We read particular articles that people share. And it's not even that you sign up to one particular blog anymore. That blogger doesn't necessarily write all the time great posts about things that you're interested in. But, but once a month or, or once every six months, they might have the key post on the particular news item that, that all scientists are talking about and it's trying to filter out those smaller units and um, make them easily presentable to each other and, and to the public to, to access. Okay, so you're saying that the internet uh, 